Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, it's time for the Q&A video, so let's cue in the questions. And the first question is from Axel9546, who is asking, are there color e-ink LCD devices with full operating system that also have external monitor feature? If not, some question, same question without the color, thanks. Well, basically, if I understood you correctly, what you're looking for is an e-ink or an RLCD Windows or Mac powered device? And the short answer to that question is no, there aren't devices like that per se. To my knowledge, there's only one device that actually combined this and it was a Lenovo, very expensive uh, dual screen Lenovo uh, laptop, which had a normal LCD screen on one side and it had an e-ink screen on the front panel when you close down the device. But ha I haven't had the chance to actually test the device out. And I believe from what I've read that the functionality of that front panel, e-ink panel is limited, plus it's a small panel. So in reality, I think that you're far, far better off actually buying a dedicated monitor device and a very small form factor computer of there are many to actually choose from. So what you can actually do is, so let's say that you maybe buy a new SVD uh, R LCD display, and that you actually have a tiny, tiny little Windows machine that's perfectly capable of doing things that you might want in a daily manner. It's not a workstation, but it's going to do your browsing, typing and whatever, social networking and normal work use. And you can actually attach that to the back of the screen, uh, effectively creating your own AIO device, all-in-one device. So that's something that you can definitely kind of keep in mind and take into consideration. Next comment or question is from uh, Sakshambansal10, and it's in regards to the microphone not actually working in some of the voice over IP apps on books platforms. And he says like Bluetooth earbuds should work for vo voice IP apps, right? And yes, that's actually true. I have tested it out and then things work. So that further kind of confirms that some apps are not aware of the microphone for whatever reason. But yeah, when I was doing the Bluetooth uh, thing, that didn't work fine. Next question is from Atina Edwards and 7244. And she asks, do you think the Note Air 2 Plus will have an update so you can insert a hyperlink in a notebook or PDF to another page in a notebook like the Tab Ultra does? What That is what I'm really wanting. If Note Air 2 Plus gets one update, I will absolutely make me buy one. Well, uh, here's the thing. The, the, the Note Air 1, 2 and Tab 2 Plus have all been updated with the update 3.3.1 and that's the update that carries that hyperlink functionality. So you do have that same functionality already available on the Tab Ultra, well, no, on the Note Air 2 Plus. Next one is from Anu Pramakrishna and he says, great video as usual. Do you know if or when books will include tilt support in the native Notes app? And if Newt if not, if not, do you know why not? The Autodesk Sketchbook app seems to support Tilt. Well, the Tilt thing is a purely software kind of a thing, so it's not something that depends on the uh, capability, hardware capabilities of a pen or the device itself. It's a purely software thing. Now, I know that books were talking about that many years ago and they were mentioning this, but they never followed through. So I really don't know. But from a hardware standpoint, there's nothing really stopping them. It's just that maybe they're not able to fine tune the software side of things to get it to perform just right. Or maybe it's simply not a priority for them. But the device is certainly capable of it. As you rightly mentioned, the Autodesk Sketchbook app seems to support Tilt, of course, because it's a purely software kind of a thing. Next one is from Yiva Senasea 7167 uh, Hi, could you tell me how can I print with the Ultra Tab books? Thank you for all your advices. Well, sure, that's not a problem at all. So all you need to do is actually grab your device. Let me get it to sharpen up. So you're in your library and you navigate to the document that you want to print. Don't know the important thing is you can't print from the document. You have to print from either the file browser or the library itself. And then you long press 
on the actual file that you want to share and then you find the share button so let me just get to the share button here and then depending on which print service you have installed and you have actually in your own system that's something that you have to find then in the share option you will find the print options and that's how you print on any books device tab ultra included another one comes from darth sida hi excellent review like always thank you can i bother you with a question of course when you sideload a pdf do you know what is the maximum size of the pdf the question is in relation to the kindle scribe i use android e-reader and an android maximum size that can handle is around two gigabytes to me it's quite important because i have a lot of pdfs with 1.8 or, or, or two gigabytes holy moly what kind of PDFs are those? I'm really, really curious. Thanks in advance. I don't know because I don't have PDFs of that size. What I do know is that you have the native limitation of if you uh, upload the or, or basically transfer the PDF file via USB-C cable onto the, the Scribe device, then you won't be able to mark up the document at all. So if that's not what you're looking for, then we're talking about the uh, conversion and importing into the KFX format, which you can do via the email sent to Kindle and the, uh, the sent to Kindle app and the browser, right? And there you have your native limitations. So the email thing is going to be naturally limited by the size of the email attachment, which I think is around 25 megabytes or something like that. The browser has a limitation of 200 megabytes that's indicated. And the, uh, the app, I don't know, it's not really kind of shared anywhere, but I tried to upload uh, and convert an 800 megabyte uh, document, which never arrived. It was, but you don't get an error report. You don't get anything. It's just like, okay, uploaded. And it never arrived to my Kindle scribe. Now, maybe if I repeat that test enough times, maybe it would eventually arrive to the, to the scribe, but I really don't know. So to answer your question, I'm almost 100% positive that it cannot support files that are two gigabytes large. Next one is from user xf3tn3gw9m. Wow. I had not used my Note Air in quite some time and missed the 3.2, but just updated to 3.3.1. The main issue I see up front is that the toolbar, I assume the main toolbar, went to some default setting and I cannot find where to customize it. There is no longer a more settings under the settings. Any guidance is greatly appreciated. Well, I'm not 100% sure what exactly do you mean, but I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just thinking that you are uh, referring to the main toolbar here that you actually kind of swipe down and then you have it like this and that you're probably referring to this area here that you can't customize this if that's the case you have this little button here that's the edit button and once you tap on that little edit button let's try and tap it in the camera which is difficult there then you get all the other options which was the more settings and you can drag and drop and you can customize all the shortcuts that you might need so if that was what you were referring to then that's how you do that if not then please provide some clarification so that i can actually address exactly what you are looking for next one from true or no true o niner okay true o niner what about the pen scratching the screen for Kindle Scribe? We're talking about here. Someone said the screen scratched already when they have been uh, writing on it for some time. Yeah, the someone said thing on the internet really works out properly well. Um, I'm not going to discount that one person, and I know that there's only one indication so far that one person mentioned online that they had seen scratches after only uh, three days of use or something like that. And I am almost certain that those are not scratches and that those are basically simple uh, residue marks that are left by the spendable nib, which is being sanded down by the paper-like roughness of the surface of the screen. So then the dark particles of the nib itself uh, fill out the pores of the roughness of the screen and then you see some scratch marks. Those are not scratch marks, they're like skid marks. And that's something that appears on every device that I've used. And the simplest thing is just grab a dry microfiber cloth and very, very lightly, just simply brush over the device and watch those scratches 
disappear. Question from JPC326 regarding the Tab Ultra. Can you sync with Google Drive? Yes, if you use an external uh, synchronization app such as AutoSync or things like that, and you can synchronize the library contents only, not the modifications of the library or anything like that. You can't do those things and you cannot uh, synchronize the notebooks themselves. So you can only synchronize the exported notebooks and PDFs and things like that. But uh, no, as far as the native synchronization of everything, no, you can't do that on the books uh, platform in a way that I think that you are asking me if it can do it that way. And the last question for this session is from Majid7668. Does this or any other e ink note taker have the ability to always have the display stay on the page you are writing on without going into standby, just like with a real book, so you don't have to turn it or unlock it anytime? Um, you need to continue writing. Obviously, it would drastically affect battery life. Well, a uh, majority of the devices have uh, the ability to go into settings, power settings, and um, either adjust the screen timer out or the go to sleep mode to never. So that's one alternative. But on the books uh, platform, for example, you have the screensaver setting, which is really interesting. And then you can set up the transparent screensaver. And this is how I actually use it. And you can see these black bars on top and bottom. So right now, this, the, this display is, or the device is sleeping. It's in a standby mode and it's spending as little battery as it possibly can. But due to the nature of the e-ink screen, the benefit is that I can still see the last page that was there. And truth be told, I use it all of the time like that and then it just lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks so yeah on the books platform you can definitely do it like that without the penalty of the added battery life consumption well that's it for this session of questions and answers i hope that you found the video interesting useful informative or entertaining if you did please like and subscribe and in the notification bell down in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide i would also like to invite you to check out the mydeepguide.com shop and check out the my daily organizer if you want to have your uh, life, professional or personal life, and your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily needs organized in a really good way and with a super awesome kind of a hyperlinked PDF document that's helping out really, really a lot of people, then maybe it's worthwhile to check out the My Daily Organizer uh, either on the link or using the links down below to check out the playlist and see if that's a product for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.